Hello and welcome back to A World Without with me, Chris. And me, Jack. This is the podcast where we get into the hypothetical and discuss what we think would happen if someone from our everyday lives suddenly stopped existing tomorrow. Yep, and today we're taking a look at what life might be like in a world without time. Well, there we go. I think that'll do us for today. Hope you enjoyed listening. Yeah, thank you very much. Nah, this, that's good. that was a good one, wasn't it? It's funny. Uh, who knows where we are in the podcast anymore, right? Yeah. Time's gone muddled. Oh, crazy. Maybe the <laughs> rest of it will come after this now. Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? A World Without Time. It sounds like a, like a James Bond movie or something. Oh, it does, actually. Yeah, yeah. A World Without Time, starring James Bond or whatever. That's the old school trailers. but Yeah, because yeah. it's like nonsensical, which a lot of them are. Like, tomorrow's not enough. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, today, a good day. No, that's that's Die Hard, isn't it? Uh... Yeah, no. Because tomorrow is not enough isn't one, is it? It's uh, the world is not enough and tomorrow never dies. <laughs> tomorrow is not enough. I smashed two of them. <laughs> tomorrow is not enough. <laughs> that sounds like what a boss would say. Like They're like, I need it in tomorrow. And they're like, no, tomorrow is not enough. No. <laughs> If anything, that proves my point. It sounded like one, even though when I said it, you know, it's just all nonsense. You know? <laughs> it really is. And I mean, the more you start thinking about it initially, you're like, hang on a minute. Why even is this world now? We're in, what? I don't understand. This might be the, the main one that kind of mashed with my brain the most. <laughs> yeah, I mean, anyone who's listened to these before knows that sometimes I struggle to get my head around like what it actually is is to have this yeah. this, yeah. this one was just like oh, I, I didn't even know where to begin i was like but time is everything <laughs> it's a world without everything yeah you know what I mean? like, when you don't know what the thing itself is it's really hard to then imagine having without it because you didn't know what it was to begin with so i definitely say this is our biggest topic we've ever attempted to tackle because <laughs> you know we've done some big stuff before but like time is all things nothing is anything without time yeah it? I, I know. I don't know. That's the thing. I don't. I don't know. Is it? Maybe. Like, there's probably some real like sciencey people watching that are like, well, actually, um, I know all of the answers. But yeah, we, I we feel can... like I've heard people say before that time isn't even real. You know, like that time <laughs> is just like a construct of us trying to understand the unit. It's not actually a thing. So I don't even know. Maybe we'll be fine without it. Who knows? Time ain't even a thing, man. It's like what even is time? Yeah, right. That's yeah. the person you heard it from, was it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much. <laughs> so uh, I think the main way we should look at it, or at least this is how I looked at it a lot, was more that we've kind of forgotten the concept of time. We can't track it. We don't know what it is. Like, it's still kind of happening, but just not on a human level kind of thing, right? Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, the flow of time is still happening. Like, time is still moving, but we don't have any ability to measure it. We don't. It's not a concept in our society. Yeah. That, I think, is the only way we could approach this one, because otherwise it's just like, there's nothing. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. There is technically, you could maybe look at it as time has frozen still, and we're all kind of like statues or whatever, but I mean... What are we going to talk about with that? Like, yeah. there's nothing to say, really. Otherwise, everybody's all very still. Would you enjoy a world where you were the only person moving around and everybody else is frozen in time? Like Bernard's Watch. Very much like Bernard's Watch. Oh, that's a British 90s reference. That is a really, really 90s British reference. So that is <laughs> that's going to go over a lot of people's heads. But basically, it was a TV show where we were younger, where a dude had a stopwatch where when he pressed it, the world froze and he, he could move around, right? Yeah. That was such a, like... A crazy fantasy for me. I thought about, I used to think about that all the time. Like how cool <laughs> that would be just to get to walk around where everyone else is frozen around and kind of just like do other things. And then you can just get to go back to normal time. I, I thought it was great. I would love it. So I, I used to watch Bernard's Watch as well, of course, because I was a cool kid. But um, could he like watch TV and stuff still? Like how much could he move somebody's arm and it would like change position when they unfreeze again? Yeah, I definitely think he could manipulate stuff because I will, I can remember one where he's like saving some people from like a crash maybe or something, and so he like moved a thing or something like that. I don't know, maybe I'm making that up, but I'm pretty sure he can move stuff. I don't think he could. I don't think he could watch TV, no, because that's the TV would be paused as well, right? Yeah, that's real, right? Like that's like a thing that's having to move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't think he can watch TV, no. So that would be quite boring. So I definitely wouldn't want to live in a perpetually frozen time with everyone else. 
but you would like Bernard's magic watch to be able to control it. I would love Bernard's watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think isn't in the movie Click with Adam Sandler. Is he? Can he not do that as well, or is that just? Yeah, but he can like rewind and fast forward and pause. I think he in slow mo. I think he can do everything. He basically just yeah, he just has a remote, right? Change to channel two. You know, yeah, all yeah. that stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Press the red button. Get some uh, extra info. <laughs> Then the other version of this is maybe more just time isn't in order anymore. It's kind of jumping about all over the place, right? It's it's oh. like we're we're all constantly time traveling every like, I don't know, a couple of seconds or whatever. It's just like bam, random time, bam, random time. Yeah, just like one of those really confusing films that's all out of order and stuff. A Christopher Nolan movie, yeah, exactly. Yeah, basically, basically <laughs> memento, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that would mess with my head. I wouldn't like that at all. I mean, especially if we're conscious of normal time and everything's jumping you're just literally gonna be like oh where am i teleporting now why have i yeah. got a duck on my head like trying to keep a conversation going would be impossible you forget you don't even know what you were just talking about <laughs> in that time, like, you know <laughs> yeah yeah it would be horrible even if that was like every 24 hours or something that might, would almost be worse this is almost a, a a version of hell we're creating here with this oh, that's kind of cool though what you just jump to any point in all of human history every day yeah you look at the calendar and it's like oh it's it's the 4th of june 1933 okay <laughs> whatever and then 10 bc suddenly <laughs> and then like the 1700s and then 3096 <laughs> yeah yeah exactly oh that'd be hard to adjust to but it would be pretty cool at least for the first few times depending where you wake up i guess are you in the same maybe you're in the same location but like you know the world is moving that sounds around. terrifying you go up suddenly a, you're a, inside a, a building, building. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> wake up in bc suddenly fall out the building yeah. hopefully there's like a diplodocus underneath you or yeah. something that you land on <laughs> unlikely in bc but the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait yeah sorry hang on i was like yeah about 10 bc just <laughs> dinosaurs yeah the dinosaurs were in 10 bc right yeah yeah, yeah yeah i mean technically it's all bc really isn't it so you weren't wrong uh true <laughs> it's all before christ it's just like a lot before Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm, I'm very right. So how dare you? How do days work in this world? Like, are we a constant time of day? Like, it's always midday or it's always night or, or like, what? Because if we can't measure time, like, just a day passing is a measure of time. Like, even if you don't try to measure it, it is inherently measuring time. Mm. Yeah. It's tricky, isn't it? So is it just that we're, like... You'd wake up in the morning, or do you not even wake up in the morning? Maybe, you but it's day and night, the light cycle and everything. It, you can't exactly. Or, or do are you be talking more just like you know? I guess saying like, uh, oh, we'll we'll go visit there at dusk is still kind of a time. Yeah, hundred percent. Because before people actually invented like clocks and time and stuff that's exactly how they would have done it you know just like yeah at sunrise at sunset at midday it still feels slightly less of a time than being like four twenty. You know. Yeah, for sure. But I think like this only works if like what whenever this kicks into effect, whatever time of day it was at that point, wherever you are in the world is where it is. So my question to you is, what time of day would you want it to be? Oh, so you're saying it is going to be freezing throughout. It's the day night cycle has stopped as well. I reckon. Yeah. Interesting. I, I would like oh, prob probably around lunchtime. Honestly, <laughs> hold on. You imply that as if like it's because you get to constantly be in love. <laughs> <laughs> I never implied anything of the sort. But I don't know. It just feels like you know you you've woken up. You've sort of got a few of your early bits and bobs done, and you're you've got the whole day ahead of you. But you're not you're not yet like knackered by four p.m. You know. Right. Okay. So you're going into it with the mindset that you still have the mindset of that time. <laughs> I mean, as opposed yeah, to just like maybe. the physical environment. Because I'm just going more physical environment. Like, I would want it to be sunset. Right, constant sunset. Yeah, like a not like constant golden hour. Wouldn't that be the dream? Just to live in a place that was constantly golden hour. Oh my god, it would be very pretty. I feel like you might get some kind of vitamin D in um, deficiency or something. No, because you'd be out of net twenty four seven. So like you're making up for what you wouldn't have at night. But then, right, you might just have to go out and do a little bit of uh, sunbathing here and there, just to yeah, yeah ensure yeah. you're getting it throughout the whole day. Yeah, that would be quite nice, wouldn't it? You preferring sunset or sunrise? Um, well, I guess I just see m way more sunsets than sunrises, so I always have more of an association to liking sunsets. Yeah. Because I very, very rarely see a sunrise. I think that's it for me as well, because I, with a sunset, again, you've, you, you're kind of already awake. Yeah, you might be kind of, you know, getting a bit more tired because you've had the whole day, but I feel like you can enjoy it more because your brain is going, whereas a sunrise, I mean, come on, you've barely gotten out of bed at that point, you're knackered. 
Yeah, and I think it's because I've simply just seen way more sunsets and not many sunrises, but I always feel like sunsets are better, like they look nicer, but I think that's just like bias of having seen a lot more and like the few sunrises I've caught haven't tended to be great, I guess. Maybe. There is that patch of time, like I think when with a sunrise you get that kind of real peace and tranquility and quietness yeah that you don't get as much with a sunset necessarily because you kind of you're going into night time and people are still doing stuff and there's a whole evening because i definitely couldn't remember some i remember going out really early one morning to just do some filming like in the middle of like this field somewhere yeah and it was just me there and like yeah that was like a really beautiful peaceful sunrise but i think just yeah i've had so many more sunsets that I'm, i'm always gonna pick sunset i love a sunset Oh, that's fair enough. And I guess you could always travel around the other side of the planet and then they're having constant sunrise. Exactly. If you need some night, there's some places you can go. Yeah. It'd almost be like whoever's in the middle of the night, they're quite unlucky if that's where the time stops for them. Although, maybe it become the big like party place. You know, all the nightclubs suddenly go there. Oh, yeah. If it's like over Vegas or something, it's just like 24-7 Vegas party yeah. nights. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What is the opposite side of the world to to England, at least? Um, well, I always remember <laughs> from school it being Vanuatu because we used to write, uh, we were like pen pals with people in Vanuatu because I think it's the closest place. Well, it's, it's the closest point to the opposite side of the world to the UK. Right. Because I think it's just on water. <laughs> I think the actual opposite side of the world is water. Just, yeah, just some fish. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yes, Nemo is the closest <laughs> yeah. thing we So, I think it is. I don't hold me to that, though, but that's what they told us in year seven. Interesting. So your old friend that you used to write to. Yeah. I think I'd ever got one letter back and then they never wrote me back again. <laughs> right. Fair enough. But yeah, whatever we decide, that's the punishment we're putting on them potentially of being the opposite. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, Van Wartu. <laughs> Does this mean we can't be late anymore? Yeah, I was thinking about this one a lot because I hate both being late and other people being late. I am a very, very on-time person. Yeah. And I hate it when people are late, and I especially hate it if I'm running late as well. Because then you're the one being the guy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. And I, so I was trying to work out whether this was a good thing or bad thing, because it's like, well, maybe now I can never be late again. That's good. But also, I will never know if I'm on time. Yeah, that's true. So maybe it's even more stressful. <laughs> but then you also won't ever be late either, so it's always just... It's always okay. How do you feel about being early? Or do other people being early? Does that annoy you? Depends on the context, right? If they are inviting you to theirs and you are early, I think that's rude because yeah. they're not ready for you. You know what I mean? Like they mm-hmm. told you to be at a time and you're there before they asked you to be there. That's rude. That's why I just get there on time. And like, I don't know, maybe I'm just overly anal about like time management. But I think <laughs> it is so easy to be on time. Like, It doesn't matter whether I'm getting on a train and getting up. Don't matter. I've been late to things, but that's very rare. Like, something has to go wrong. (laughs) Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Jack, you were late to this very podcast recording. Yes, because something went wrong. (laughs) Yeah, just as you were saying the whole thing. I hate hate it when I'm like, I hate people being like, it's just thinking the whole time. (laughs) Yeah, okay. This is a bad (laughs) example, isn't it? But have I ever been previously late to a podcast? No, no, not at all. You've been bang on time. Exactly, every time. <laughs> and did I immediately tell you that I was going to be late? Yes, yes, you did. Yes, I did, didn't I? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the thing. Okay, because I don't mind. Like, no one can help it if something goes wrong and they end up being late. Communicate that to me is all I care about. People just rocking up half an hour late without even acknowledging that they're late. I cannot stand. Yeah, yeah, that's the worst. If it's five minutes or so, I can maybe understand that you, you, if you had to stop to message that message, it would have slowed you down more. Yeah. But yeah, when you're half an hour or so, that's there's no excuse for that. With the, the today's modern technology of communication, exactly. you should be able to be FaceTime Google Maps in me your exact location at every step of the way. Yeah. And also, like, if you just like, I'll oh, come over at like seven ish. That's fine. You know, you can be whenever, you know, half seven, half seven. That's fine. Like, yeah. But if you're like meant to be meeting at a place, you know what I especially hate? Oh, my God. When they're the one who set the time and then they're late. Just set a later time, mate. What is wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah. That does annoy me, too. Don't worry about it. Yeah. As you can <laughs> tell, words me up quite a bit. So <laughs> at least uh, at least that's that stress has gone from my life. But without time. It'd be even harder for people to be on time and stuff. So maybe it's going to stress me out even more. Everyone's going to be turning up at whatever time for it or not time for it. Yeah, I guess you just can't decide to meet up anymore. It's just a happy accident if you end up in the same place 
at the same moment, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you have to be like, oh. I might see you there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning to go to the cinema, and if you do as well, maybe we'll get lucky. <laughs> yeah. Because that's what I mean, like, schedules for everything, like, trains and, like, yeah, cinema times and et- just anything that has a schedule of a time it's on. It's like, how do you now do that? Oh, there's going to be so many people just shrugging, like, train drivers just being like, oh. <laughs> I guess, <laughs> yeah, like, I guess public transport just has to be, like, they just run regular trains or buses. Constantly just turn, like, you know, I, basically how I think the tube works. I don't think I've ever checked the time of a tube. Not really, no. Only when you stood there at the platform. But yeah, for the most part, they just hope that they just keep going. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like, it does say, like, oh, three minutes until it's going to be there. But, like, I don't have to think about that in advance because I know I'm just going to turn up and there is going to be one within the next five minutes. You know? Yeah, yeah. Whereas, obviously, I know that's not really viable for more remote places in the world. But uh, we'll just have to up our public transport game, I guess. Just just keep them going, yeah, non-stop. And I guess if they fail at that, no one's going to really know because who knows if they're yeah, exactly. late or, or whatever. So Exactly running on time for a reason. <laughs> and then what about, like, pregnant people as well? Like, you're not, you're just going to, when, when's the baby due? I don't know. I just, yeah, yes, is the answer. I was thinking about this with just, like, just generally people's ages. Like, are we, again, like we are saying with the days being stuck in time, are we stuck at whatever age we are when this happens? Or, like, if you're pregnant, you're just now perpetually pregnant forever. The baby never comes. Oh, interesting. Or, like, if you're just on the edge of death, <laughs> you're just perpetually there forever. Or if you're just, like, <laughs> a three-year-old, you're perpetually just going to be a three-year-old forever. Oh, I don't know. That's a tough one. I was, I was still imagining it more just the fact that we were all... It's like the concept of time had fallen out of our heads and no one was going to okay. discover it again. So we would still age and everything, but we just wouldn't no even have the concept of like trying to put a a label on any specific thing but we wouldn't also have ages i guess like you'd just be like he's young he's less young he's kind of middle <laughs> he's, <old. laughs> he's middle yeah <laughs> yeah i guess so but that's even still like feels linked to like the concept of time saying someone is old is linked to the idea that they have been around for a long time yeah yeah it's it's still a measure of time so i guess we wouldn't even really use those words anymore it would just be like it's the guy in the red t-shirt and you'd be like what the two-year-old or the (laughs) seventy? i mean you wouldn't say that but like (laughs) you're just looking at two like like a toddler and an old man is like i have no idea what johnny's talking about (laughs) But then also, like, you know, age limits. No, the one with no hair. No idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, it still the doesn't one, work. The one who's pooed himself, no. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> so then with, with like, age uh, limitations and stuff, like, on, on alcohol and driving and all this sort of stuff, like, what, is our two-year-old just going to be, like, lighting up a cigarette and driving a Ferrari? Yeah. I feel like it's got to be some kind of proof level thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, just, like, down this shot, see how they deal with it. <laughs> I think we said something similar on a world without numbers, you know, where we said about ages. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably we did. (laughs) There were just all these tests. Yeah. Yeah. There is a similar crossover, isn't there? You're like, you know, yeah, don't have numbers, you can't have age, and without time, you can't have age. So, yeah, I imagine we've probably gone over this stuff before. Whatever we said in that one, that. (laughs) (laughs) Brilliant. Yeah, top quality entertainment. Do some research out there, people. This is a uh, callback, but without (laughs) having to be bothered to do the callback. (laughs) Clocks and watches are pretty useless now. Oh, yeah. Are you a watchman? Are you a watchman? A watchman. A man of, of a watch. Not not from Zack Snyder film. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't uh, mind having a watch, but what I will say is if I do have a watch, I never, ever use it to check the time. It is entirely just a accessory, like, you know. It's a bracelet, basically. It's, it's basically uh... just a bracelet, yeah. Right. Because maybe I shouldn't admit this in a public forum, I'm not great at reading the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can read the time. Like, I can obviously read the time. It's not a problem. But, right, you know, like, you look at a digital clock. You're not, there's no part of you that's having to work out what that says. You just read it and you know what right. it says. You're t- so you're talking about an analog clock you struggle yeah, with. An an- yeah, an analog okay. clock. Yeah, yeah. But if I look at, if I look at an analog clock, there is like that process where I do have to go like that means, and then I've got it, right? I imagine it's similar to how Americans are reading a 24-hour clock, because apparently they don't get it. They're like, 19? What does that mean? Yeah, they're, uh, <laughs> they're fully 12-hour AM, PM stuff, which... Uh, military time? I don't <laughs> get it! <laughs> yeah, I... I, I th- it surely makes so much more sense just to combine the AM, PM into the number itself and just have 24-hour. It's so much easier for everybody. 
I guess it's just what we're used to. But yeah, so I imagine if they were to see 17, they'd have to do some kind of like working out what that means, unless they're used to 24 hour time, whatever. Right? Yeah. That's kind of what I feel like I'm like with analog clock. Like, I can read it. I can, I can, I can get that. But like, I hate it. That's what. That's one reason I don't like wearing a watch. If someone goes over to me when I'm wearing a watch, and they're like, "What's the time?" I just show them the watch. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you think you figure it out, mate? Yeah. What about you? You a watch guy? I I don't I don't like wearing a watch. I'm I'm not a very accessory guy at all. I like to be as naked as I can while still wearing clothes. Okay. I feel like it's just extra. Ja- I feel like a Christmas tree or something with it all on. You know. Yeah, I get you. Jangling about, but yeah, I'm very much. I would prefer a digital clock over an analog clock if it's going to be on my wrist, especially just because I do find it still quicker and easier to read. Yeah. Because I always end up just out of habit checking my phone for the time anyway. Yeah, right? I never think to check my watch and said I'm always just going to check my phone before I've even thought about checking well, my watch. That's also why I don't need a watch anymore because it's, I still have the time on me in my pocket. It's almost like the old gentleman that would have like a pocket watch now, but instead <laughs> yeah. it's just my phone. Just get it out of my pocket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We would get rid of like the whole half past debate. You know about this? Tell me. Well, you know, just like if I was to say to you, it's half six. What time is that? 6.30. Yeah, but in Europe, it's not, is it? That would be half five. Right, yeah. You're right. It, they, they're almost saying, like, we're saying half past six, and they're saying half to six. Yeah, because basically every time we're saying half six, we're always saying half past six. We're just dropping the past. Yeah. And so, like, I think that's why we don't find it weird. But so many Europeans think, like, but like it's half six. Like, you, it's clearly five, th- which I thought was a baffling concept. But then when you think about it, it's, it does make sense. You're halfway to six true okay yeah i hadn't even i hadn't i'd never understood it but that is actually the first time i've kind of thought oh okay yeah it kind of makes a bit more sense i mean I, I said half six or something like that to to an american friend once and they were like what three like what what do you mean half six god americans aren't good with time are they <laughs> <laughs> don't understand at 24 o'clock like, don't understand half six they yeah. just thought i was giving them a maths quick like quiz randomly <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, it's weird how that isn't because I think most people would probably know what you mean if you went half past six, right? I think so. Yeah, if you had that extra bit in there, but it's still to a European brain then might be a little bit like, wait, hold on, I still need to kind of get uh, into that mindset because I guess we say quarter past the hour and quarter to the hour. We're not saying forty five past or anything. Yeah, yeah. So I guess you know we still I know we're still adding that extra word in there, but I know at least the Dutch as well. They go one step further. They say, okay, let me get this right. So if the time was three twenty five, right? Sure. They would say five to half to four. There has to be a more efficient way to say. <laughs> it just feels like this massive list of. It sounds like some like goblin that's like, "I have a quiz for you. You must solve the riddle to pass." You know, if there are five minutes to the half and the six and the four, yeah. at what time shall I arrive? <laughs> exactly. It's like um uh, in in France as well. Um, Ninety nine. Um, they say, oh yeah, I can't remember what it actually is in French, but they're like four t- twenty ten four twenties and six six fours and yeah. three nines. <laughs> it's like super complicated. Like it's yeah, they don't just say nerf de nerf. Yeah, which they totally should. But yeah, it has been a problem. I remember it being a problem when we were in a hostel before. And we had like a couple of British people in one room. We had some like other Europeans in another, and we're like, well, what time should we meet there? And we just said like, oh, half seven or whatever. And then like they turned up an hour earlier. And they were like, where are you? And we're like, we're meeting at half seven. They're like, yeah. And we were like, hold on, have we have we not understood like the time difference? Like, we've, like have we not changed <laughs> right, the time right. or something? So we thought that at first. And then we're like, what? It took us ages to work out that it was even a problem. That's the first time I ever experienced that that was a thing. It was fun. It's crazy. So basically, they were saying that you turned up late and you hated yeah. that. And I hated it so <laughs> much. <laughs> you invented a whole new method of time just to try just to get so I wasn't of it. late. Yeah. <laughs> I do actually have a bit of a problem with uh, digital clocks. Go on. I, for the longest time, I feel like I will often look at a digital clock and it will be 1234, 1234. And it gets me like an odd amount. I know obviously I probably look at a clock, I don't know, 20, 30 times a day or something. But still, that specific number, 1234, just seems to be popping up over and over again in a really 
creepy way almost I, I can't explain it yeah well i have that with 11 11 as well but i've heard people talk about this before i think it's just almost like maybe this isn't the right for it but like confirmation bias it's like right you, there might be another time that you see just as often but you haven't acknowledged that you see it like if you happen to look and it was like 252 right every time yeah but that's not one that triggers that. Oh, look, one, two, three, four. In the same way, like 11, 11 is like a noticeable number every time you see it. I guess it's a lot more noticeable, isn't it? But like, what's, yeah. what, so what, 60 times, even if we just go 12 hour clock, 12, that's 720 different times that you will see. Yeah, but there's also um, going to be more times in which you're going to check, right? Like, you're not going to be checking at 4 a.m., are you? True, true. But it's, I don't know, it's, it still just feels crazy that I don't look and it's 12.35. And I know I wouldn't necessarily remember if I looked and it was 12.35. Uh, that's what I think, yeah. But, like, to to still manage to catch 12.34 when it goes by. Yeah, I get what you're saying. It still feels crazy to me. Like You also did say that lunch is your favourite time, so I reckon you're just checking the clock a lot around there. <laughs> Maybe I'm just every five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, isn't it? Yeah. If you check it up around twelve thirty, you're gonna see twelve thirty four quite a lot. It's like lunchtime. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Weirdly, as well, in two thousand and eight, it was twenty oh eight that I kept seeing. That that was a freaky run as well. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Literally lasted for two thousand and eight. Yeah. Oh, so did you actively notice you stopped seeing it in two thousand and nine? Uh, yeah, I think so. Interesting. Because I was gonna say, like, again, that's just like a. Maybe the first time you saw it, you're like, oh, look, it's the year. And then, like, you saw it, maybe, like, it happened to be you saw it again quite quickly. And you're like, oh, my God, it's the year again. And now <laughs> it's in your head, you know? And yeah. now, like, every time you're seeing it, you, you're acknowledging it, as opposed to just, like, looking at the time. Yeah, it is It is weird, though. It does make me fearful of looking at a clock. So maybe now I'll do what you do. If anyone asks me what the time is, I'll just show them the watch and be like, yeah. I don't want to know. I don't want to look, just in case. You say fearful um, of what? It just feels like I'm in the Matrix or something scary. Right, you think like... it's like a glitch in the in the system? <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. A sign that we're in a simulation. It's someone you try to send you a message from the from the outside. Exactly. Yeah. One, two, three, four. I don't know what they're trying to tell me. Learn to count. I think. Yeah. Maybe it's like a secret passcode to something. You'll come in, in a, like ten years time. You'll come to a thing and you'll have to like escape a room uh, desperately or something. <laughs> and there'll be a padlock and you're like, no, I don't know what it is. And it'll be one, two, three, four. Oh, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually going to save my life. It's just been preparing you this whole time. Yeah. I was also trying to think, like, on a smaller scale, how this would affect me in a very regular, mundane, day-to-day -day way, right? Like, I'm not going and seeing people, like, every day of the week and stuff. Like, most of the time, I'm just sort of working at home, quiet day in kind of thing. And for the most part, it just boiled down to, like, the alarm clock in the morning and, scare like, not scarily, sadly enough the microwave <laughs> i thought about the microwave as well yeah yeah oh there you go now i don't feel alone yeah i was just like generally my cooking would suffer because i'm like i will always set a timer when i put something in another i get distracted quite easily i'll burn stuff if i don't put a timer on yeah you know? so i always put a timer on so i wouldn't be able to do that so my cooking would suffer and then yeah microwave what is a microwave without a timer it, exactly microwave is just a glorified timer in it really <laughs> pretty much yeah well for, so now in this new world you just have to put something in the microwave turn it on and then just kind of guess or yeah when it starts bubbling in there or whatever then take it out i don't know you'd have to maybe invent some kind of like steam sensor thing in it instead of having time now it can like sense when it, or just a t temperature makes more sense than it yeah like a probe you could like put a little yeah. temperature probe thing in it and then it's, it automatically turns off when it gets to the, what they should already do that yeah hang on a minute <laughs> hold on oh no what we doing microwaves <laughs> <laughs> that is a way better invention have it just have a temperature receptor in it and then when it gets to a certain temperature it turns off yeah i mean micro a lot of microwaves do try and be clever don't they some of them have got like a popcorn button on they've yeah. got like a, a roast chicken button on and all this crazy stuff and it's like i always wonder what they do what is that actually <laughs> changing there I, I think i don't know like the, obviously the time and maybe like the the wattage or power or whatever like but I don't trust you, Mr. Microwave. I don't think you are a clever enough computer to cook my chicken well, thank you. Also, don't put a roast chicken in a microwave, Chris. Well, yeah, obviously not that either, but... <laughs> I can just imagine the individual microwave just getting a brief beforehand. It's like, okay, we've got a roast chicken in this one, guys, so make sure we're... Uh, you know. Go, go, go! <laughs> They're all, like, jumping out the, the thing. I don't know. Don't know the innards of a microwave. Nah, I think that's what it's like, right? It's like paratroopers coming out of a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.
So what would I do with my problems, right? So back in the olden days, they had like a, a window knocker to wake you up in the morning. Okay. Just a guy with a big long stick, and he would come and wake you up at the time you asked him to. Nice. And obviously like a cockerel as well, that could work. That could You could buy yourself a pet cockerel and that would wake you up. But would the cockerel know when to crow? Ooh. Crow? Uh, core? Core. Core, maybe. No, that's also crows, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I don't know. My cockerel's well enough. No, me neither. Uh, sing? No. Um, Cockadoodle do. Let's just go with that. Y- yes. Would they know <laughs> when to do that? I don't know, because I guess that's their like internal body clock telling them to do yeah. that. We're, and we're just saying clocks are gone, so their internal body clock's gone as well. Yeah, maybe we'd have to do that. M- my mum swears by it, this thing where like she needs to wake up at a certain time. Sorry for calling my mum out on this, because this does sound nuts. Um, <laughs> she says she needs to wake up at eight. <laughs> she uh, bangs her head on the pillow eight times, and she wakes up at eight every time, apparently. Wow, okay, so what, if she did seven, she'd wake up at seven? Yep, she swears by it. What if she wants to wake up at 7.30? Little, half little one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I might give this a try. I have tried it back in the day, and I did wake up on time, but I don't know. I feel like once isn't enough of a confirmation for me to believe it. Yeah, it definitely needs to be an uh, experiment that's repeated multiple times. Yeah, exactly. And I would never, <laughs> even if it worked five times in a row, ten times, right, I would still always want to set an alarm. You know, I would never fully trust the system what's the science but is it just that your brain gets so kind of scrambled in the banging it on the pillow that it kind of set by the time it settles again that's when you wake up it takes an hour for every brain bang yeah i don't think there is a science to it i think there's very little science involved <laughs> Int- and wait I, I need to know the. Di- are we talking like face first into the pillow or like the back of your head i actually don't know i think it's the back i think it's just sort of like knocking it back on the pillow like you know okay that's so that's what you did she's not like smashing her head into it or whatever <laughs> right, you know? having like a pillow fight with herself yeah. just yeah <laughs> And what about the microwave? That I can't use the same solution for the microwave, like a window knocker, to someone hiring some bloke to come and watch the microwave for me and then tell me. Maybe you'll just have to learn how to cook properly. <sighs> my chicken. My chicken's never going to be cooked properly now in the microwave. Mm. Or maybe it actually now will be cooked properly. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Well, that, I've just cooked the cockerel accidentally. No wonder he's not waking you up. <laughs> he's taking his time, isn't he? He's not telling me the microwave's ready. <laughs> you put him in there and like, he'll yeah. call when it's done. <laughs> sports. Oh, like tracking them. Yeah, so many sports use time. Like how quickly you're running around something, but just like the length of a game as well. Yeah, true. Right? So I think like for a lot of them, say like football, instead of like a 90-minute match, we'd have to go to like a, a tennis or a badminton sort of situation where it's just like, First to ten goals, or first to three goals, or whatever, you know? Yeah, right. More of a... I guess also, like, long jump and stuff like that is more just about yeah. how... The distance you get, rather than the time. Yeah. That would be an interesting way to measure the long jump, though. It is more count the air time of the person. Yeah. So would you want to go long, or would you want to go up? Or just a perfect 45-degree trajectory. Try and really maximise it. Yeah. I feel like you'd get people really hurting themselves as well, because they would, like, sort of, like crunch their legs up way later than they need to so they'd last longer in the air but end up like really hurting themselves <laughs> they just like cannonball the ground basically yeah yeah exactly yeah but hey a lot more injuries in that version of the sport oh, that does sound kind of fun though doesn't it i mean maybe replace the sand with like some bouncy castles or something like that like yeah. something a bit more nice or just water i guess water's also a thing yeah that is a thing um, but that would be cool like the airtime challenge how much airtime can you get that is surprising that isn't maybe that probably is a niche sport out there somewhere isn't it Maybe, maybe. Because also, like, a lot of world records are kind of, like, time-based things. You know, like, fastest Rubik's Cube as well. Like, all that sort of stuff. Like, a lot of people would be losing their world records, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I guess any, like, speed cubing. Just almost any race is done by time, isn't it, really? Like, even car races and, and, and running races and things. Like, yeah, I know what they do. You know, in a, a computer game, you have, like, a ghost car going round. Yeah. They'll have to kind of have some kind of system, maybe a bit like in the dog races where they've got like a fake rabbit going around. Yeah. You've got like a fake little car that goes around at exactly the speed of the world record holder or whatever. Yeah. And you're racing that. That sounds fun. Yeah, that works. I was going to say, like, it, all it really matters for is qualifying and like records and stuff. Because if you just put six people in a race, it doesn't matter how long they took. It's just the first one to get round, doesn't it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that doesn't matter. But yeah, qualifying becomes a problem, I guess. 
But I guess you still just pick the best one of each of the races and put them through. So that does mean you technically could have had someone who was faster than them not go through. But who cares? Yeah, I, d- I think sport's definitely going to need to take a little, a hard look at itself and change a few things. But yeah, ultimately, I think a lot of things can be... Adapted, yeah. Adapted. And hey, I think it sounds maybe even better in some ways. Shake it up a bit. Especially like the football one. Like, no more nil-nil draws. Right? It's just first to get to three goals. Doesn't matter if it takes us four days. We'll get there. You know? <laughs> Isn't that like cricket or something as well that just goes on literally for weeks or whatever? Or it's like that tennis match as well, whatever, that like went on like, for seven days. Or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 50 each game or whatever each, yeah. Yeah. One thing I am happy about losing time, I hate how relative time can feel all over the place, right? Sometimes things feel like they were years ago and it only happened like a couple of months or whatever. And other times yeah. you can't believe it's already been 20 years. How has it been 20 years? Like it, it is scary sometimes how much things change. Yeah, but is that not now all things? Like we still wouldn't lose that relativity of time. We just actually have no idea of how long it actually was ago. Sort of. So you wouldn't know if it was yesterday or 20 years, but it wouldn't feel like either. Yeah, that thing you thought was like six months ago, but that was actually like a year ago. You would just forever think it. Well, I guess you wouldn't have a concept of a year. Yeah, no, see. Did you get what I'm saying? Again, it, yeah, it, it gets hard. It messes you with the doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess sometimes... If you're kind of really bored and you're waiting for something to happen, time can go really slow. Yeah. So in that aspect, I guess we wouldn't be thinking of time going slow every more. We're more living in the moment, not thinking about the future, not thinking about the... We're just going as we are. Now is now. And we're, we're happy with it. Very zen and hippie-like, you know, just be with the now. You know? Exactly. I, I think I like that. I mean, speaking of which, Jack, we spent an hour in a box before... <laughs> <laughs> for a challenge i spent a bit longer than an hour in a box <laughs> well that's the thing like spoiler alert here we both spent way longer than an hour we were tr- okay we'll, we'll take a few steps back we were doing a challenge where we got in a cardboard box and we just had to guess and get out of the box as close to an hour as possible and yeah both of us were in there for a lot longer than we needed to be because it just messed with your mind like you just sort of thought like it feels like it has been way over an hour but equally it could have been 20 minutes and like there's nothing in this box there's such a good point to bring up because yeah that was such a great experience of what i guess even though we were thinking about time a lot it wouldn't really be that because we just wouldn't have the concept of time it does give you an essence of what it would be like to not ever know the time because you would just constantly doubt yourself like so much of that when we're in it was like yeah it could be half an hour it could be 10 minutes i actually have no idea yeah. because as you're saying time is so relative that there's no inherent truth to it when you're experiencing it. it's like it could be anything until you actually are counting it so it almost feels like we'd perpetually be living in that feeling of not having any idea of how much time has passed or how much time has left to go or like when things happened it would be weird and that's it i'm not i can't tell if it's really scary or very freeing maybe both i think it would be a hard adjustment yeah I think anyone who existed in a time when time existed. <laughs> Wait, when was this time? When? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. This is the thing. They'd also have to be like, oh, I used to exist when there was a... And then they would just sort of drift off because they wouldn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> the whole back in my day thing. It's just like, wait, what? When? Yeah, yeah. That doesn't really work, does it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of times when I was thinking about this one where I'd like, get on a train of thought, they'd be like, oh, yeah, but I guess without time that just wouldn't yeah everything falls be. down it's such a ingrained process in our heads of what time is yeah and they say that as well that as you grow up time feels like it gets quicker and i definitely feel that already being 31 time feels like it's going much quicker than it was like 20 years ago yeah definitely and is that just because when you're like a five-year-old if one year passes that's like a, a sixth, sixth of, of your life, life. Yeah, yeah a fifth of your life yeah. whatever and now it's like it's a 30th of my life so it's not as much of a a bigger slice of the pie kind of thing that's always the logic that made sense to me i do remember watching a veritasen video where he basically debunked that idea but i actually can't remember what his conclusion was which is completely useless oh, veritasen definitely go watch that if you haven't yeah great video even though i can't remember what 
it was about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I do remember finding it quite interesting because, yeah, he basically brings up that idea that that's what everyone kind of assumes it's like. And that still, to me, is what I feel like makes the most sense. At least that's got to ha- play a role. Uh, yeah, it feels like it must do, yeah. Because you've just done a year so many times by the time you get to 60 that it's not a big deal. The first time you do a year, that is everything. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's all of it. That There is nothing more than that. Like, of course it's going to feel longer. You know I think I mean? so. I, I definitely feel like that is what my brain goes through during that kind of uh, thought process. So regardless of what Veritasium says. But it is also like relative as well. Like, for example, COVID was a great example of like, that was two years or more, but like roughly like two years that whilst what I was in it felt really long because I was bored. Yeah, it felt like forever. But... In reflection, I feel like it was like a month because I just did so little. Yet I've done like, you know, if you go on holiday, you go traveling, you do where you're somewhere you're doing loads of stuff. Like I did six weeks, you know, around like New Zealand, for example. I can remember so much detail of that. We did so much stuff that that like in my head fills up like two years worth of like time based yeah, memories. Yeah. Like I can remember so much more of that than I can like entire years of covid basically so i think a lot of it's just experientially related right like how much you're doing how much new information is going into your head so that's something really nice to take away from this podcast is that we should just always be trying to make the most of our time and then that will make us live longer yeah theoretically at least experientially (laughs) not actually terms and conditions apply (laughs) don't sue us but i mean yeah Changing gears a little bit, I thought I'd talk about time in different places other than Earth, because, of course, over the universe, time is a very weird thing, being experienced at different amounts and stuff. So you and I, Jack, we're roughly about the same age, basically, in terms of the universe. But especially in terms of the universe, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but if we were on Venus, we would be 50 years old. Okay. That is our age converted from 30, 31 to 50. So nearly nearly double. And so also I assume that means the age difference between us would be bigger. Yeah, uh, nearly double as big. So almost you'd be a whole year older than me, basically. I think I would be more than a... Uh, yeah, I would be about a year older than you. So would that mean our birthdays would kind of end up, like, aligning? Almost, I think. I don't know, I can't do the maths on this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Mercury, 130 years old, we're looking at now. Oh, no. <laughs> but obviously, we, we, would, we wouldn't we would die now until we're like 400-ish or something, yeah. if I've done the maths right on that. Something like that. The funniest one I thought was uh, if we were on Uranus, we would only be five months old. Oh. So very immature. Little babies. So we don't, you only ever get to, what, being like a, a year or just over a year old? Um, basically yeah yeah I mean if you reach your second birthday you're doing pretty well uh, no you wouldn't be able to reach that that would be crazy that'd be really old yeah yeah oh, no. no yeah you'd be, have to be like over 120 years old yeah, yeah exactly it'd be, it, <laughs> no no one's getting to 120 on Uranus <laughs> sorry just out of context no one's getting to 120 on Uranus doesn't mean anything but it sounds hilarious <laughs> It's also uh, interesting to to see. I know we're kind of getting rid of time, but it's it's just fun to kind of look up a little bit about some of the things that we're going to be missing out on and the different measurements we have for different lengths of time. So I've got a couple here. We've got um, the shortest I could find is the Planck time. Yeah. Which sounds like a an MC Hammer sequel song. Stop. Planck <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The, no, the gap has to be really small, though. I see it more <laughs> as like some like personal trainer is doing like that like as a remix for when you're planking and like stop plank, plank time, time and you've got yeah. a plank for a minute and then he goes then the song carries on <laughs> <laughs> except the plank time is something like ridiculously small, like 0.000 like a million what zeros one at seconds or something stupid okay so not a very good workout no easy to do though i reckon very easy to do yeah uh, you've got a jiffy as well, which, um, you know, a lot of people just say. An actual measurement of time. It's an actual measurement of time. People are like, I'll be back in a jiffy. And what they actually apparently mean is less than one one hundredth of a second. So we've got some over exaggerators oh. here. Well, wow. I think almost every single person who's ever used that word in that context has been lying. I think so too. Yeah. What would a situation be where that does make sense? Yeah, especially, are we back? You can't even leave in a jiffy. <laughs> no, no, you got to do it. I mean, maybe I will shoot you with this gun in a jiffy as you're already squeezing the trigger or something. Yeah, you should start saying that as you're doing a thing. I'm going to punch you in a jiffy as you're punching. Jiffy! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. 
something that people maybe should say a kilo second which is a, a thousand seconds turns out it's about 17 minutes or so that would be a good thing to say. i'll be back in a killer second uh yeah just get in the car be there in a killer second in a killer second you know it's good you've got a, a mill a day as well which is one a thousandth of a day which is 86.4 seconds so about a minute and a half or so you just count your day in miller days miller days you could say that as a new time i'll be there at 372 miller days yeah put someone in the microwave for a miller day yeah exactly another one i didn't actually realize was a measure of time but it kind of makes sense now i've thought about it is a quarantine is 40 days so is it yeah i guess they're fully interlinked with you're meant to quarantine for 40 days and that is i guess like quarren is for 40 it's kind of right sure so most of like the covid quarantines were lies because they weren't 40 days were they yeah so if you say a 20 day quarantine you're all sorts of confused in here. You're saying 20 days, 40 days. You should really be saying I'm doing a half quarantine, yeah. Exactly, I'm half quarantining, right? Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, and the, the biggest one that they had on Wikipedia, and I'm, they probably could have kept going if they wanted to because, you know, but is a quetta second, which is one nonillion seconds, which is one with 30 zeros after it which is 31 sextillion, 709 quintillion, 791 quadrillion, 983 trillion, 764 billion, 586 million, 504,312 years. Well done. We're getting that. That was good. Thank you. It took me nearly that long to say the whole number. Yeah. What was that? A, qu- a quarter second? You know? a, a, it's quite a, it's, it, it's almost like quite a second. Whew. That was quite a second. <laughs> that is, to be fair to him, quite a second. <laughs> yeah. What? Why are they using seconds? What a stupid... I was going to say, why not... What about a quite a year? Yeah, exactly. Or just like, you know, a, a less number, decade. but year. Like, yeah, just start like doing bigger divisions of time when you get that big. Don't be measuring things in seconds. Yeah, you can really cut down on some of those zeros if you just stop <laughs> doing things in seconds. Yeah, right? <laughs> So, shame to learn all these and then uh, get rid of them, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. They're all uh, going in the bin. That is quite a second. (laughs) I quite like it. I'm going to say that now. I'm not going to say I'll be back in a jiffy. I'll be be back in the quite a second. And then people are like, oh, that sounds short. You'll just be like, I'll be quite a second. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they're like, oh, good. He won't be long. And then I never return for the rest of existence. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And then some. And what one other thing on that list as well, which techni- I I still always get confused about this, but a light year, it's not a time at all. They always yeah. say like, oh, that's fifty light years, but it sounds like a time, obviously with year in the name, but no, it's just a distance of how far light can travel in a year. So that always gets me. But yeah, light years can stay. They're around. Yeah. So Buzz, you're safe, mate. We're gonna keep you in. They say that time is the fourth dimension, right? Apparently. So if you go to the cinema and you watch a 3D film, isn't that actually also 4D because it has time? Like, it's not just a paused frame of a film. Yeah, this is why I hate those, like, 4D experiences. It's like, what, time, is it? It's like, oh, no, they think the fourth dimension is water. (laughs) It's a little bit of tickly (laughs) things on the back of your leg and some vibration, yeah. The fourth dimension, known as a (laughs) bit of spray. (laughs) Another thing I hate, which is going to be gone, or is it? I mean, we kind of touched on it already, but time zones around the place, they are confusing and weird and like it's tomorrow in another place or in australia already now what how is it tomorrow what what yeah I, you know what the weird ones are where they have like 5 45 or whatever and it, like it's not a full hour time zone yeah yeah that makes it even more confusing so we're not even you, you don't even have to just change the hour hand or whatever anymore but it's now like actually a completely different time but when it gets a different date that really gets me so you don't like the idea that someone's living in a different day do you you think that's weird it just feels weird i can't it feels like time travel basically well it basically kind of is in a weird sense i know but they are still doing it at the, like whatever they're doing now they're doing it at the same time as me right now they're just calling it a different time i guess right right but that just shows how like like as much as time is a real thing time is also a construct you know we've made up a lot of it yeah it isn't tomorrow there what are you talking about <laughs> it's just it's now which is yeah. we're all in now but it's only because it's just because of the position right they are in night so either they to always have the same time as us they would yeah always just 
their midday would have to be our midnight or whatever. Yeah, so. yeah, I guess so. And then obviously going on from that, that then when you get to midnight, you can't just keep going on the same day. You have to go to the next calendar day. Yeah. So then that means that we're all in different dates now. Is it just two dates are always happening in the world or is there three? Is it sort of spread over three? I think it's because the UK is zero, right? So we're right in the middle. So it goes both ways either side of us. GMT, baby. Yeah, and I don't think it ever gets more than 24 hours. So I don't think it could ever hit a third day. Greenwich Mean Time. Sounds like the name of like a bar or something, a club. Yeah, where like a load of gangs go or something like a biker gang goes. Yeah, should we go to Greenwich Mean Time and have a a real mean time? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, just not beating people up <laughs> in Greenwich. Yeah. And so yeah, it's always it's always at least minus twelve GMT or plus twelve GMT, right? You can't ever go beyond that. Uh I think it's the I think there's fourteen, right? I think there can be places that are fourteen hours. In so both negative and positive. I actually I, I don't really know, to be because honest. Because then that would mean we're split over three days. If there was a negative fourteen and a positive fourteen, there would be for two hours or an hour man this is a maths heavy episode and my brain is not coping well with it hold on i'm, I'm just googling here apparently there is minus uh, yeah plus 14 and minus 12 meaning theoretically there is a 26 hour difference even though that goes up beyond the 24 hours that are in a day so i don't even know how that works that again just shows how much of a construct it is just some places are just knocking about in a third day are they what I, they what? must be yeah just for a couple of hours i guess and then they catch up that's crazy so somewhere there is a place two days ahead of you the howland islands and the republic of kiribati have time zones of yeah minus 12 utc and plus 14 utc so that must mean they're yeah two different days apart that's madness one of them needs to shift to the other day and just Come be two on. hours different exactly surely. just change it to two what are you doing <laughs> one of you needs to decide what's going on what would that mean that they would gain a day or miss a day and I don't know which one I'd rather. Uh, you want to gain a day, don't you? Just You'd have it as a holiday, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely gain a day. Yeah, you just take it all as a public holiday somewhere. Time zones, man. They are very confused. So again, good. Good that they're gone because we have bigger problems now with trying to work out when and where everything is. <laughs> yeah, although unfortunately, you still have to deal with jet lag, I reckon. Oh yeah, your body still would just be like, I have experienced... Not Time? time. But <laughs> question mark. <laughs> I have existed and I am tired. Yeah, I have experienced life. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Body tired. <laughs> I get yeah, because I guess it's just your eyes seeing the sun and stuff like that, right? That kind of Yeah, and things like eating apparently, all that sort Muck of you throws up. you out. Yeah. It all goes back to whether the day progresses still, which I think we decided it does. That's true, yeah. Who knows with this scary time business? And does this make time travel like it's technically we believe it's impossible right now? And probably always will be. But does it make it even less likely to happen or more likely to happen now that time has gone? I mean, it's just travel now (laughs) anyway. Yeah, yeah. We can do that. (laughs) We can definitely do that. Yeah. Uh, I guess we just wouldn't even be thinking about it, would we? We have no concept of the idea. That's a point. Just thinking about the past. That is a time-based thing, is it not? Oh, my. We have no memories now? Yeah. Talk about history. All of that. That's just, that's time. Gone. When did that happen? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. We've been missing a whole thing here. We've missed the whole thing. We're almost wrapping up enough. We've <laughs> uncovered the whole thing. We've blown this thing wide open. You say we're wrapping up, but who really knows, right? With uh... Yeah, yeah. This is actually going to be at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I guess lastly, we should talk about New Year resolutions, seeing as as this episode comes out, we are just having the whole New Year thing going on. So, you know, and that is obviously a big moment in time. A year for us humans, a year still is a very landmark thing of time to measure that we wouldn't be having anymore. But, you know, is that a good thing or a bad thing that New Year's resolutions have gone, do you think? Uh, I'm not a big New Year's resolution guy, but I'm not like against them. I think if it works for you, go ahead. I think it's a good thing to like, incentivize people to do it if they weren't otherwise going to do it absolutely yeah but i ultimately think that like most people fail because if you don't have the drive to do it in another part of the year you're probably just not going to do it well that's the dumb thing isn't it january is a horrible time to try and like give something up or whatever because you're already miserable january is a very miserable month at least in england where it's very gray and rainy and bleh all through January, and you've had all the excitement of Christmas and New Year's, and that's all gone, and you've got nothing great to look forward to. January is the Monday of months. It really sucks. 
A hundred percent. That is the last time I ought to be giving up the things I like. Let me do it in June when it's nice out. I can just sit in a park <laughs> or something and just enjoy life. Not when I'm sitting indoors cold, just like wishing I wasn't here. Exactly. That's the one time I want my chocolate or I want my beer or I want my all that. You know what I mean? Definitely. So I think we should start up, what, new year and a half resolutions. Yeah, half year resolution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like the sound of that. I think that's going to be a lot more popular. It's going to be a lot more effective, I think, giving you that blank slate. Yeah, way more effective. Yeah. So no New Year's resolutions this year, guys. We'll wait until June. Time is money. As long, we lost money now. That is a problem, yeah. Because it is money. Uh, have you ever tried paying with time? Doesn't go down well. Um, You could probably say, I'll do some jobs for you. I'll give you some of my time. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends. It depends who it is. If you're going into a big... If you're going into McDonald's, they're probably not going to let you, like, do a little odd job for them to pay for your Big Mac or whatever. But certain places might. They're just like, that, that's £1.50, please. I'll give you Thursday. <laughs> that's one <laughs> Thursday, please. That, that's a half an afternoon. Thanks. Yeah. And here is your change of <laughs> 20 minutes. <laughs> no, I reckon that things are hard enough without time. We can keep money. We'll keep money, okay. We'll lose the phrase. That very much sounds like another episode for a world without anyway, a world without money. Does, so we'll, we'll yeah. keep that. Well, I'll, I'll make sure to bring up time is money again during that episode, I'm sure. Yeah. You've got time is of the essence as well. Are we? Li- what is now of the essence? What does that even mean? I'm confused. I don't even know what the phrase means anyway. I don't know. Do we want essence? Do we not want essence? I, I don't know what essence is. Yeah. Time is of the essence. It really is one of those phrases that the more you say it, it's just more that I know less and less what that really is saying. <laughs> right? Is that, wait, wait, what? <laughs> Time is of. of <laughs> it's every the... word. It's getting worse. <laughs> no word in that sentence I understand what it means. Time is, okay, I'm, I'm following you so far. What is time? Yeah. Time is of. Time is of. What well, does it mean? Time is of the essence. The essence. What's the e- time is of it? What do you mean time is of a thing? Not just any essence. It's it's the essence. Yeah. Time is of a thing. It doesn't mean anything. Even if it was just time is the essence, I would still be confused. Yeah. Time is essence. Time essence. Time. E- <laughs> <laughs> nah, I reckon we'd get rid of that one. Yeah. I don't like that. I think so. And finally, time flies when you're having fun. Very relevant for this podcast. Doesn't it? Yeah, that's cute. But I think that goes back into our experiential thing, though. A little bit. If you're having fun, things go a bit quicker. That's still going to exist. Well, that's an annoying way round, though, isn't it? You want things to go slow when you're having fun. That is the problem, yeah, because things go slow when you're having a bad time and things go quick when you're having a good time. Exactly. So that is time messing with us. Yeah, damn time. Get rid of it. Maybe it's good he's gone. Yeah. That's what they mean by Greenwich mean time. They're saying time. What a meanie pants. Like. Yeah, mean little time. <laughs> How are you feeling without time, a world without time? You, you okay with it? Um, yeah, uh, I think so. I mean, I, I don't know any better, right? So yeah, I think I'll be, ignorance is bliss, I think. So I think I'll be very blissful. Yeah, I was surprised. I thought this one would be a bit more catastrophic. I mean, and if all actual time ceases, that is pretty catastrophic. I mean, if Bernard gets his watch, absolutely. Yeah. Uh-oh. But if we're talking about it in the sense that we've been talking about it, you know what? I think everything just chills out a little bit. We don't need to worry about stuff so much. You know, things just happen when they happen. Yeah, just chill out. Just let them go. Let it... Time, time is nothing. Time means nothing anymore. Time is... Was of the essence. But now is of nowhere. <laughs> and I'm still confused about the entire thing. So we did a fantastic job. Go us. But there we go. I think that'll do us for today. Hope you enjoyed listening. Hello and welcome back to A World Without with me, Chris. No, 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 Chris. Oh, sorry, hang on, we're at the end, sorry. We're at the end now. I lost track of time. Yeah. If you have any thoughts on A World Without Time, uh, you can contact us on our socials, the links are below. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you again next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye.